Hi, my name is Mark Rodriguez, and I want to welcome you to Love Unlimited Church Online. We have a very special service for you and your family. I'm going to share a message titled, Dare to be Different. And then I'm going to ask you to please stay until the end of the message, because we have some special music prepared for you by Johnny Rez. My wife and I got married when we were in our mid-20s. We were young, and some may say dumb. At least I was. A few years after we were married, one of our high school friends got married at a hotel in South Beach. So we were so excited for this wedding, not just because our friends were getting married, but we hadn't seen some of our high school friends for years. So I don't know why, but I assumed, oh, a wedding at the beach. I'm going to go a little comfortable. I'm going to go to this wedding, you know, with a Miami Vice look like this. And this was a horrible mistake, and I'll tell you why. We missed something at the bottom of the invitation in small print that said black tie. So all the guys in the wedding are wearing tuxedos, and I'm dressed like Johnny Crockett. I felt so dumb. You know that feeling you get when everyone is talking about you and everyone is looking at you? Well, multiply that by 100. Everyone was talking about me. I felt terrible. See, we've all had moments like that. We've all felt out of place, talked about at times. We've felt like the butt of a joke. It's embarrassing, it's discouraging, and it hurts. And today we're going to look at the life of a guy who wrote the book about sticking out like a sore thumb as we continue in our study through Hebrews chapter 11. And here's what Hebrews chapter 11, starting in verse 7, says, By faith Noah, when warned about things not yet seen, in holy fear, built an ark to save his family. And by faith, he condemned the world and became the heir of righteousness. That comes by faith. The question I have for you today is, why did God choose Noah? Imagine if you were God, what kind of person would you choose to start the human race all over again? Who would you choose if you were God? If God were to make the decision again to destroy the world and start over, would God choose you? That makes me uneasy. You know why God chose Noah? The Bible says this in 2 Chronicles 16, 9, the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth that he may show himself strong in behalf of those whose hearts is perfect towards him. God looks at your heart. See, today... We're going to talk about the four characteristics of what type of person God uses. The story of Noah is in Genesis, the very first book of the Bible, Genesis chapter 6, 7, 8, and 9. And here's where we learn the four characteristics of the type of person that God uses, the type of person that God chooses to do great things. The first characteristic, we're going to find it in Genesis chapter 6, verses 5 through 8. And here's what it says. The Lord saw how great man's wickedness on the earth had become and that every inclination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil all the time. And the Lord was grieved that he had made man on earth and his heart was filled with pain. So the Lord said, I'll wipe out all mankind whom I've created from the face of the earth, man and animals, creatures that move along the ground and birds in the air. For I am grieved that I have made them. But Noah found favor in the eyes of of the Lord. God looked down and he found one man that he was going to use. And as he looked down at the life of Noah, a man that was overlooked by people, we learn why God used him and how God can use us to accomplish great things. The first step that we need to take to be used by God is this. It's super simple. It's I must be available. That's pretty obvious. He was available. The fact is, here's the entire population, but God can only find one available person. In God's eyes, availability is much more important than ability. Your attitude is much more important than your ability. Most of us use our ability as an excuse. Oh, I, I can't do that. God could never use me. I can't do anything. We just need to be available. See, one of the most amazing testimonies in our ministry it was when we reached out to SLAM, the school where our church meets, five months before we had our first service. And we asked them if we could bless some of the families for Thanksgiving. And so my wife and I and a few friends got about $1,000 together and we said, hey, let's pick 10 families at the school that we can give a $100 Thanksgiving meal to. And when we finally got our appointment with the school administrators and we asked them, hey, are they families in need at the school? Do you think you could help us find 10 families that we can bless? They followed up and said, absolutely. We actually have 100 homeless kids that come to this school.
And I asked the lady, I'm like, do you know what their names are? And she responded, I have them right here on my clipboard. And I said, well, you know what? Reach out to all the families and let them know that they will have food for Thanksgiving. As soon as I said that statement, my stomach turned. I started sweating. I thought to myself, we haven't even had our first service. We haven't passed the buckets for the first offering. We don't have money in the bank. How are we going to feed a hundred families? About 20 minutes later, I'm driving in my car and one of my friends reaches out to me, he hadn't called me in a while to see how I was doing. And he's like, hey, how are things going with the new church? And I start talking to him and I tell him, oh, we got this great opportunity to feed a hundred families. And he's like, how are you gonna do that? I'm like, I don't know. He's like, do you have the money? I'm like, I don't, but God is gonna provide. He said, you know what? Don't worry, I'm gonna take care of all of it. At that moment, I just started to cry because God showed up, not because I was able, not because I was gifted, but because he is able. And it wasn't my ability. It was my availability that allowed myself and our ministry to be used by God. And God can do the same thing for you. You're probably saying, how come God doesn't do that with me? How come I don't have those exciting experiences? Why doesn't God use me like that? See, if you will just be available and stop focusing on what you can't do, God will use you in ways you never thought possible. See, God is not looking for superstars. He's not looking just for the super talented. God prefers ordinary people with faults and hangups and fears. They're not necessarily brilliant they don't usually stick out of the crowd. They're just available. And Noah was available. God is looking for people who say, use me, Lord. Would you do that? You see, look at the disciples. They were a bunch of losers. They were even poor fishermen. Every time Jesus goes to see the disciples, they're mending their nets. They couldn't even keep their nets in good shape. God uses people who are available. The second thing, that we must do is we must dare to be different. In Genesis chapter six, verse nine, it says this of Noah, Noah was a righteous man, blameless among the people of his time, and he walked with God. Note, he was blameless among the people of his time. Morally, Noah was a man of deep conviction. He dared to be different. He wasn't afraid to stand out. He wasn't afraid to stand alone. He wasn't afraid of what other people thought of him. He wasn't out to win a popularity contest. See, at this point in the world's history, society was morally bankrupt. Verses 11 through 12 say that there was corruption and violence and immorality. It was a messed up situation. But none of this influenced Noah. He was not afraid to stand alone. Remember when we were teenagers and we would tell our parents, but mom, but dad, everyone is doing it. And now we're older and we still think the same way. Guys, we need to forget if everyone's doing it, we must be okay. If it's popular, then it must be right. See, Noah refused to go with the majority. Imagine the criticism that Noah probably received by building the ark. The ridicule from his neighbors, Noah está quemado. Noah is crazy, he's fried. I'm sure people would say, there's crazy Noah out there building a boat. He thinks the world's gonna end. And this happened for a very long time. And then all of a sudden, he's probably got pressure now from his families. How would you like to have been Noah's kid? You go to school and people ask you, so what does your dad do? And you say, uh, he's an ark builder. And then you get home and you're probably thinking, Dad, that boat in our front lawn is embarrassing. Why can't you just get a normal job? He probably got a lot of flack, not only from his friends, but also from his family. Could you put up with being misunderstood and criticized for years and years because of your convictions? Because you're doing what's right? You see, conformity is often the enemy of Christianity. Don't blend in, stand out, be bold. We're living in times where people are looking for hope. I tell people every opportunity that I get, I tell people, I'm praying for you. God bless you. See, the popular opinion is to blend in. When I was growing up, my sister Cookie loved Boy George. And there was this song that she was always playing. You probably know it, Karma Chameleon. And I would sing the song too. They would even dress me up as Boy George. Don't tell my mom. And then one of the lines of the song would say, I'm a man with no 
convictions, right? I mean, as an adult, when I heard that song again, I felt bad. How could you have no conviction? You see, Noah, on the other hand, was not afraid to stand alone. While everybody else was going crazy, he said, I will not participate in those kinds of things. He was blameless among the people of his time. Proverbs 29, 5 says this, it's dangerous to be concerned with what others think of you. But if you trust in the Lord, you are safe. See, Noah was available and he was willing to be different. He was willing to stand out in the crowd. He had conviction. What gave him that confidence to be different? For so many years, you may be asking, look at verse nine. It says, he walked with God. You know what? He had fellowship with God. He had a relationship with God. And that gave him the strength to say, I don't care what anybody else does or thinks of me. Number three, I must follow him completely. Not on my timetable when I want to, not my way when I feel like it, mi manera, when I have time. All right. The people that God uses are people who follow directions without making excuses. Genesis 6, 22 says this. Noah did everything just as God commanded. See, it doesn't say he did some of the things that he wanted to do. It says he did everything as God commanded. Delayed obedience is disobedience. Did you know that obedience is simply another form for faith? You say, I've got a lot of faith. How much do you obey God without question? That takes faith. Faith is following instructions even when it doesn't make sense. The project God gave Noah didn't make sense. It didn't make sense for several reasons. One of the real tests of faith in life is how do I follow God's will? Do I follow his instructions even when they don't make sense? Do I follow his instruction even when I don't understand it? See, my kids love to ask me why. And I tell them, hey guys, just do it. And they go, but why, Bobby? And I'm like, do it, then I'll show you the reason. Then you'll see the benefits. You see, it wouldn't be faith if you knew everything up front. Noah was available. Noah dared to be different. Noah followed God completely. And that's why God used him. The fourth thing that we need to do is we must never give up. I must never give up. We saw this last week when we looked at Moses. Moses had to wait 80 years for the fulfillment of his goal of seeing the people of Israel set free out of Egypt, 80 years. But Noah had to wait even longer. Can you imagine? Noah is a key example of patience and persistence and determination. He was a hard worker. The Bible says that it took Noah 120 years to build the ark. Now here's the question. If you want to be used by God, could you maintain enthusiasm for a project that took that long to complete? Do you think you could keep your motivation up? Do you think that you could stay excited and keep going if you knew it was gonna take your entire life? Noah never gave up. One of the reasons why God doesn't use a lot of us is because we give up too soon. We want everything right now. We are a microwave generation. See, there are three things that will tempt you to give up. The first thing is problems. Problems will tempt you to give up on God's plan for your life. Every good idea has something wrong with it. In every possibility, there is a problem. That's how we grow. That's how we mature. That's how we develop. There were infinite amounts of problems with Noah building the ark. Consider some of the problems. Can you imagine how you separate the animals in the ark that like to eat each other? Obviously, you don't put the tigers next to the rabbits. You don't put the birds next to the worms. You got to keep them all separate. That was a problem. But you know what? It was God's problem. The biggest problem of them all. How are you going to take care of the sanitation for all those animals? I hear a lot of people complaining about quarantine in the last few days. How would you like to be cooped up 40 days in an animal pen that stinks? Oh my gosh, that is just crazy. See, there were problems. Problems will tempt you to give up. The other thing that will tempt you to give up is pressures. Pressures will tempt you to give up before you've accomplished your goal. I'm sure Noah must have thought, this is too big for me. This is too great of a responsibility. All the weight of the world on his shoulders. It's too much responsibility. God, I can't handle it. It's too much pressure. The pressure will tempt you to give up. 
If you're feeling pressure today, hang in there. The third thing that causes us to give up is people. People will tempt you to give up. People will disappoint you. People will misunderstand you. People will criticize you. People that you love will let you down and they will tempt you to give up. God used Noah because he was a man of commitment. He never, ever, ever gave up. Every day, Noah preached a sermon. He didn't stand up in a pulpit at a church to give a speech. He preached a sermon and the most effective sermon that anyone could ever preach. It was his life. Every day, as he nailed those nails and built those boards and bent everything into shape, he was saying to the world, I believe in God, and this is why he stood out. That's why I keep repeating that the way that we trust God during this global pandemic is preaching a message that is better than any message that I could ever preach. We need to prepare ourselves for the best season of our life and it is coming have faith don't give up i know that it can give you anxiety i know that you can feel like oh my gosh when are things going to get back to normal how about if i tell you i wish they never go back to normal i wish that things would be radically transformed i pray that your life would never be the same that you would not go back to normal but that you would be thrusted into the best season of your life, the most prosperous season, the happiest season, the most blessed season. That is what I'm praying for you. I am not praying for things to go back to normal. I am praying for God to use me and bless me in ways that I never thought possible. God wants to use you to do great things in your life. I know it's hard to believe for some of you, but God will use you if you will get usable. Can I ask you a question? Would you like to be used by God? See, that's where you find fulfillment in life. That's where you find satisfaction. That's where you find your niche, the niche you were created for. You don't find it in these other things. You don't find it by being popular. You find it by finding the purpose of God and asking God to be the center of your life. You're probably saying, Pastor, how can God use me? You know what? The first thing you need to do is say, Lord, I'm available. That means you rearrange your schedule. That means you drop some things out of your schedule. One of my biggest fears is that we will all fall back to our old ways. So many of you connecting with Love Unlimited online, and we're definitely going to increase our online presence after COVID. But can I ask you a serious question? How many things have you put in the way of going to church physically? Take some time once a week and connect with God and other Christians. Serve God. Attend outreaches. We make ourselves available for every single shower, party, pachanga. You know, it doesn't matter how many miles it is from our house. It doesn't matter how much we need to spend on gifts and outfits. We get our nails done. We get our hair done. We go to the barber and get lined up. But you know what? We can't wake the kids up early to go to church. See, don't limit what God wants to do in you and through you and through your family. The second thing is dare to be different. You say, Lord, I'm willing to follow you no matter what. You dare to be different. You dare to have convictions. The third thing is you commit yourself to God's plan to follow it. Even when you don't understand it, you say, Lord, I am willing to follow you completely. I don't understand all of these principles, but I want to follow you the best that I know how. And the fourth thing, we just covered it. You never give up. You make a commitment that you're willing to hang in there even when there's a delay. One of the tests of faith is how long can you wait? See, there's an addendum to Noah's life though. In Genesis chapter 9, I hate that this is even in the Bible. I wish it wasn't in there because it puts a downer on the whole story. The Bible says that there was this man who lived blameless all his life, the only godly man in the world that had faith, persistence. He was available. He was all these amazing things that God said about him. He builds the ark and after the flood, when the land dried out, it says that he built a vineyard and fermented the grapes and he got drunk and he took off all his clothes and he made a fool of himself. He got drunk and he got naked. Why? He had a spotless record and at the end of his life, he blew it. Why? See, the thing about the Bible is that it never glosses over those kinds of things. One of the reasons why I believe that it is a supernatural book, not simply written by man, is because if it were 
written by man. They would have left those things out. But the Bible, the Bible tells us the truth even when it hurts. The Bible says that while Moses was a great man and led the children of Israel out of Egypt, he was also a murderer. He murdered a man. And the Bible says that David, who wrote the Psalms, also committed adultery. It lays it all out on the line. It's right up front. It says, this guy, Noah, blew it. Noah, who lived perfect when everybody else was blowing it, he blows it at the end. And that's kind of a downer. But on the other hand, I think that it is encouragement for people like me that blow it all the time. See, it goes back to the heart of the whole series that God uses ordinary people. If Noah had never had anything wrong in his life, you know what we say? He was too perfect. I could never be like Noah. The fact is, Noah wasn't perfect. He was human. He messed up. He had a problem. He made a fool of himself. He sounds a lot like, you know who? Me and you. But in spite of that, God still put him in the hall of fame in Hebrews 11. That's the kind of God that I can worship. That's the kind of God that although he is perfect, he doesn't compromise for sin. He is compassionate. He is forgiving. And he says, I can start things over. I can start things over in your life. He wants to change your life. He doesn't care about your mistakes. He doesn't care about how many times you've messed up. He doesn't care how many times you've fallen on your face. See, your failure is not that you fell. Your failure is if you refuse to get up. Maybe you've had a divorce. Maybe you had a moral problem. Maybe you had a bad habit that you still can't kick. Maybe you've had some fears and some insecurities in your life. Maybe you've got a temper problem. Maybe you have a problem with jealousy. Maybe you feel inferior and you don't like the way you look. I don't care what your hang up is. God doesn't care what your hang up is. Everyone has at least one, but that doesn't disqualify you from being used by God. If God only used perfect people, who would get used? No one. God uses ordinary people. God uses people that most of us would overlook. Can I tell you something? You are known by God and God loves you. The key to Noah's life was this, and we read it today. Noah walked with God. That means he had a relationship with God. That means he had fellowship with God. And today I want to give you an opportunity to have fellowship with God. Maybe you've never given your life to Jesus. I'm going to lead you in a prayer right now that's going to draw you closer to God. The Bible says if you believe in your heart and confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, you will be saved. And saved from what? Saved from eternal damnation, but also saved on this earth. That means that your life is going to be better, that you're going to be blessed, and you're going to be protected protected by God. And so would you pray with me? Would you pray out loud? I'm going to ask everyone in the house that you're in and the place that you're in to pray out loud with me. Close your eyes and pray. Dear God, I come to you today and I say, I'm sorry. I'm sorry for the mistakes that I've made, for the sins that I've committed. I give you my life. I give you everything. Be my God. Be my savior. In Jesus name. Amen. Hey, have you prayed that prayer? I want to help you in this new journey that you're on. And here's what I'm going to ask you to do. Text the word AMEN to 786-541-1020. Text the word AMEN to 786-541-1020. And you're going to get some information on how to draw closer to God from me. And now I want to ask you guys to support the ministry of Love Unlimited. Help us to continue to reach people through our online platforms and also help us position ourselves to be a blessing in the city of Miami and beyond and to also prepare ourselves to relaunch the church when we are allowed to start our public services again. And if you want to support us, all you need to do is go to loveunlimited.com forward slash give or you can use cash app and all you need to do is type in the dollar sign l-o-v-e-u-n-l-t-d thank you so much for supporting our ministry and now i want to invite you to worship with johnny rez
not enough unless you come will you meet me here again cause all I want is all you you enjoyed that song i hope it was a blessing for your life the same way that it was for mine and now i'm going to ask you to do a few things to subscribe to our youtube channel to like this video to share this video and also leave a comment below see you next sunday